Welcome to the good old AJ Sports Podcast today. We're going to talk about college football week five. Week five. We'll talk about all the games, which teams won, which teams lost, which teams look good, which teams look bad. So let's start with the Thursday games. There was two of them. BYU beats Utah State 38-26. to BYU is 4-1. South Carolina beats South Carolina State 50 to 10 but no one really cares about South Carolina, so sorry, South Carolina. The Friday games, there's really two I want to point out. Tulane and Cruz to 4 1. They beat Houston in overtime. Houston now has a losing record. Have fun, Cougar fans. Then we had a, a marquee Pac 12 matchup Washington and UCLA. Both teams entered the season 4 0. And UCLA got the best of Washington 40 to 32. UCLA was drugging Washington for the first three quarters. Washington tried to score 16 points in the fourth quarter, but ultimately couldn't win. Dorian Thompson Robinson, he had three touchdown passes. Very efficient day. Zach Schaubonnet had over 100 yards in a tutty. Michael Penix Jr. did all right. But he did turn over the ball two times, which ultimately was the deciding factor of the game. Now the ranked teams. We'll we'll talk about all the teams that are ranked in the top 25 and the rest of the non-ranked games, which are at least carry a tiny bit of weight. Georgia embarrasses themselves, absolutely embarrassed themselves. They barely beat Missouri 26 to 22. The offense does not look good. There is the Georgia's problem, in my opinion, is one factor. They don't have a true number one receiver. I mean, Brock Bowers is a good tight end, but the whoever's catch like whoever's receiving, the receivers just are not good this year as last year. The defense is still great. You still have a phenomenal defense, but they're not helping them either. Just 26 points, 26 to 22. You don't wake up till the fourth quarter, which it was more of the, your running game more than anything else. Just an absolute embarrassment for Georgia. Not good. Number two ranked Alabama gets Arkansas 49 to 26. Alabama dropped in a 28 to nothing lead early. Then Bryce Young goes down. Arkansas steals momentum. Gets back into the game. 28-23. So this game was... It was a swing of three different momentums. And then Alabama scores a touchdown. And then Jameer Gibbs scores two consecutive 70-plus yard runs. Yes, two consecutive runs. So that was crazy for Jameer Gibbs. And then Alabama's backup quarterback, maybe that do good throwing the ball. But he damn sure did good in a run in, in a running part. Jameer, Jalen Milrow, he almost had 100 yards of rushing. Ohio State crushes Rutgers 49-10. Mayan Williams pretty much was the sole man of this offense. Stroud didn't play the best game, but didn't have to. They really put more of Mayan Williams' shoulders. And 21 carries, 189 yards, and five rushing touchdowns. That is phenomenal numbers. Daryl Henderson, like, not Daryl. Why am I thinking Daryl Henderson from the Rams? Uh, Trayvon Henderson. He did not play, so... My own Williams gets the shot on that one. Michigan travels to Iowa and wins 27 to 17. Was the best day for JJ McCarthy, but he did he he did his job. He didn't really turn the ball. Blake Corum was the backbone of the offense. So Michigan is still undefeated. Clemson. Clemson got a huge top ten win over NC State. 30 to 20. The defense looked better than Wake Forest game. D- 
DJ Yuga Lawe, or we're going to call him Yuga Lawe. And just, yeah, his last name is difficult to pronounce. Sorry. But he's having a pretty solid season. Which, yeah, I think everybody clowned him last season, deservedly so. But he, he played well. He threw the ball good. The running game was solid. DJ himself and Will Shipley. NC State's offense really couldn't keep up. Devin Leary tried, but just couldn't do much with that defense. USC beats Arizona State 42-25. USC's offense looks good. I'm not impressed with the defense, no, because Arizona State is a literal dumpster fire. But regardless, a win is a win. There are a lot of teams that like to say they won. Which show goes to Kentucky. They lost to Ole Miss. Kentucky had chances to win the game, but they self-destructed. Ole Miss really, ha- or really has relied on their running attack. Lane Kiffin's kind of adapted like last year. Let Matt Crell do, do the work. This year, he really is depending on that running game. Let the young quarterback just play methodically. Will Levis played good, but he lost a couple of fumbles in that in that last drive where Kentucky scored a touchdown, but got called back because of a penalty. It was a legal procedure. There, Kentucky was trying to run. Hurry up! They were not. They were not set properly. They got penalized for it. And then the strip sack. Ole Miss improves to five and zero. Oklahoma State wins a huge Big 12 matchup over Baylor. Oklahoma State kind of took control much in the game. It was not a contest. Baylor got a lot of yards, but they got some crucial turnovers. Spencer Sanders played decent, and Oklahoma State improves to 4-0. Penn State, Penn State won ugly. Penn State really won ugly against Northwestern. 17-7. Sean Clifford played his worst game, but the running attack and defense kind of bailed him out, and they won 17-7. Utah crushed Oregon State 42-16. Oregon beat Stanford 45-17. Bo Nix looks really good. Man, Auburn must be punching themselves in the wall. I, I'll have two embarrassments, two teams that embarrass themselves. First one was Texas A&M. Elite defense. Such an elite defense that gave up 42 points to Mississippi State. Will Rogers threw all over you. And you did not score a goddamn point in the second half. So, congratulations, Texas A&M. You are overrated. Jimbo Fisher is not an elite coach. Sorry, he's not an elite coach. He literally, he, the only reason why he won the 2013 national title was two factors. Assistant coaches and talent. And, and, here, and here's why. That team probably should have been the top five college football team of all time. How the hell do you allow 34 points to go to college that year? They made it close to Auburn. Stupid ass, Jimbo Fisher. Get out of college football. You're a joke. But luckily for you, you're not as big of an embarrassment as these guys, the Sooners. Yeah, the Sooners. Woo! They absolutely shit the bed. Like, t- TCU's offense, just no resistance. None. I didn't see any resistance. Max Dukin threw all over the place, ran all over the place. Condre Miller had 10 yards per carry. Everybody can run the, run the ball against this sewer sorry-ass defense. 55 points to the, in the third quarter. TCU, if TCU really wanted to, they could draw 70. That's how bad the Sooners defense has been these last two weeks. The offense couldn't keep up. Dylan Gable didn't do anything. Then he gets knocked out of the game. Davis Deville starts. He does nothing. Great. Javante Barnes had 100 yards and two touchdowns. Wonderful. He still got crushed. Absolutely annihilated. 55 to 24. Minnesota truly missed their. Top running back, uh, like 
I think it's Abraham Ebicon, or I think that's his name. He's he's been dominant. He he was out, so Tanner Morgan really had to carry the offense, which that did not happen. He threw three picks. Aiden O'Connell didn't do really too good either. But the last two games, Purdue's actually you know, have had a decent running game. What do you, what did you expect in this development? Devin Makobi had over 100 yards. I don't know. Just a goofy win for Purdue. Because I thought I thought they were going to get crushed by Minnesota. But that's what college football does to you sometimes. Expect the unexpected. Lake Forest bounced back after that crushing defeat. Beating Florida State 31 to 24. Florida State, they're not a bad team. It's just Lake Forest this year is just better. Jordan Travis played good. But Lake Forest played a little bit more complete football. Oh, I, I forgot an embarrassment. Pitt lost to Georgia Tech. 26 to 21. Georgia Tech, really? A team that just got done firing their head coach, Jeff Collins. God, you are pathetic, Pitt. Kansas State ran all over the field. Adrian Martinez and Deuce Vaughn just ran all over Texas Tech, 37-28. Well, let's, talk, let's talk about another embarrassment. Can we talk about Wisconsin losing to Illinois, 34-10? Illinois is 4-1 right now. Wisconsin's 2-3. Paul Christ is now gone. He, he got... Out the door you go. Enjoy your time. Enjoy the hell, Wisconsin fans. I think what this is almost a similar situation as the Bolton Neely situation. Yes, you get consistently not wins, but that seems to be your ceiling. Yeah, I, I just sneak Wisconsin and maybe Wisconsin fans are just getting tired of this level of apathy, thinking if this is just the highest we're gonna go, and on top of that, their offense is so overly conservative. Graham Burns has done nothing. He's, he's as of right now, a one-game wonder. Just, it does not look good in Madison. Wisconsin's program really, I don't know. Is it, are, are they going to continue to be solid, or are they going to go back to being a dumpster fire like it did in the 80s, really before, honestly, before Barry Alvarez came there in the 90s and got the program going? I don't know. Boston College beats Louisville 34-33. Memphis is 4-1. James Madison's 4-0. Oh, God. Oh, you want to talk about a surprise team? Let's talk about Kansas. Kansas is 5-0 for the first time since 2009. Pretty shocking development, to, uh, to say at least. Nobody expected Kansas like, literally no one expected them to go, honestly, anywhere. This team was in a it was in a toilet of all toilets. But they won 14-11. Yes, yeah, kind of an ugly win, but they won. They haven't won really anything for years, for a decade plus. So the fact that they're winning is, I don't know, Lance LaPole, so, is somebody going to grab them? As head coach, maybe Wisconsin, Nebraska. I I don't know, but he's probably the biggest shot right now. Maryland, Maryland's four and one. Michigan State, right now they're regretting paying Mel Tucker all that money. North Carolina's defense finally shows up. Wonderful, forty one to ten against Virginia Tech, a team that has done literally nothing since Frank Beamer retired. Appalachian State bounces back, but who cares about Appalachian State at this point? Syracuse is 5-0. Washington State is 4-1. Cincinnati is 4-1. They beat Tulsa. Texas beats West Virginia 38-20. A pretty solid win for Texas. Nebraska beats IU 35-21. Duke is 4-1. They beat Virginia. And the... I'll talk about Florida in a little bit. Colorado is the worst power five team. They're only five. They lost to Arizona. And Florida won 52 to 17. Let's talk about the 
the rankings. Alabama jumps to one. Georgia falls to two. The three to six spots are don't change. Oklahoma State jumps to seven. Tennessee stays at eight. Ole Miss jumps to nine. Penn stays in the top ten. Kentucky drops to 13. NC State it drops to 14. Wake Forest makes the biggest jump in the 15th. BYU jumps to 16th. TCU makes their first ranking. They're ranked 17th. UCLA, 18th, that huge win over Washington. Kansas, they're ranked 19th. They're ranked for the first time since, I believe, 2009. Kansas State, they're ranked 40th. Washington drops to 21. Syracuse makes their first ranking to 22. Mississippi State's 23. Cincinnati gets back to the rankings to 24. And LSU is ranked 25th. So let's talk about the games next week. Nebraska plays Rutgers in the Dumpster Fire Bowl. Both of those programs are trash. Michigan should beat Indiana easily. Tennessee will have a tough trip to LSU. If Tennessee can win this game pretty handily, they need to. No, they just they can't just win now. Because now they're expected to win. They gotta start winning these games, in my opinion. They if, if I if I'm gonna if I'm gonna ever believe that Tennessee could beat Alabama. Alabama has shown they're vulnerable this year. Tennessee has to beat LSU by two touchdowns plus or more, at least. Like, Tennessee has to start winning convincingly. TCU and Kansas State, they'll play at Kansas. Arkansas and Mississippi State will play. Missouri and Florida. Texas will travel to Oklahoma for the Red River rivalry. That both of these teams are pretty much waiting to say, hey, we beat each other. Because both teams are good at best. They're good. They're, they're, not, they're not great this year at all. Purdue travels to Maryland. Auburn plays at Georgia. Georgia needs to win this game convincingly. Two games where they just they are off. They have got to win this game convincingly. Texas Tech plays at Oklahoma State. UCLA, they have a test. They'll face Utah. Wisconsin, let's see if they can get things going, traveling to Northwestern. North Carolina, Miami, that, both, both those teams are in the toilet, in my opinion. Washington travels to Arizona State. Ole Miss should beat Vandy easily. And Ohio State should crush Miss Michigan State. Clemson travels to Boston College. That should not be a problem. Washington State plays USC. Hopefully, maybe, hopefully, if you're a USC fan, don't overlook Washington State. They might, they might pull a little sneaky upset. South Carolina travels to Kentucky. Kansas State travels to Iowa State. BYU travels to Notre Dame. Alabama and a and to the coaches beat full. Alabama should crush them. Four state plays at NC State. So there you have it. There's ep- there's the episode of College Football's Week 5 and the games coming up at Week 6. Thanks for watching.